That's right. Here winging it. Skirex Media. It's been walking around, connecting with friends that I haven't met in person yet. I have met Dan Egan before. He remembered me again, like I told Drop you guys. Drop a name, Jesus. Yeah, oh, fuck it, hey, dude. Um, <laughs> you haven't, I don't know if you guys have noticed, but I, uh, I absolutely swear more when I'm talking to you all. I don't know. Is that is that like a Jersey thing? Like, do we bring out like just the awfulness in people because of our uh, our roots in New Jersey? I don't know. I don't know. I, I think it's just. But you guys have anything goes on your show. I have anything goes on my show, but it doesn't always. Always but unfiltered. That's always it. always unfiltered. But anyway, I'm sitting on Brian and Mario's stage. Brian and Mario from the High Flutin' Ski Bum Podcast. Friends of mine met these guys today in person. How you doing, boys? We are doing very well, and uh, yeah, thanks for, for taking some time here. Yeah, this, it's funny to say it's our stage, but it really is our stage. It is. You know? Just do whatever we want. I mean, they stopped by, and the head lady was like, you guys do whatever you want. Like, all right. I mean, all we really have to do is keep things on the rails. Yeah. Like, we need to keep things just a little bit together, stick to a schedule. Well, they said we could do anything on the stage. I mean... There looks like there's a pole around here, like a stripper well, pole. I don't know what happened to the donkey. I said there was going to be a donkey here at 4 o'clock, and it's not here. So so no donkey show. There's going to be Maybe. six disappointed savages that there will be no donkey here. <laughs> and then the Snowbound Expo turns into a riot. Sorry, Stephen. <laughs> Shout out to Stephen Morgan. Because you know what? I brought goggles for the donkey, too. So that awesome. would make it ski-themed. Absolutely. Put a couple of poles in his... How about a Yeti? Like a Yeti with a big don. <laughs> That'd be awesome. So how hard is it? Would it, though? Would it? That would be amazing. I see things amazing, different. Yes. Awesome, though. I see awesomeness in where other people don't see it. So it's your stage. How, how does it feel? You guys have been coming up over a few years, and now you're hosting at the event in the East. Like, what's that like, guys? You know, it's funny that they chose us. It's not ha-ha funny. Sure. It's just kind of... Strange, it's it's. Funny. It's charming and it's nice, and I don't really know what to do with it. And, you know, I mean, we really, you know, we I did some prep. We did some prep trying to figure out how to how to host this, and it's uh, it's it's been a little surreal to be honest, if nothing else. I think today was a shorter day for the for you know our stage, the activity, and sure. I think tomorrow maybe we'll start loosening it up and just kind of. I don't know. I, I wouldn't say the filter might come down a little bit more, but I like that. I mean. Yeah. Y- the thing is, you can't get too weird here, you know? Like, you Yeah. Because it is a family show. That is, like, the number one thing. Totally, totally. You don't want to totally. get too super weird. Right. But, um, you know, that's kind of the reason you know, we even started the podcast, because we feel like a lot of stuff, like, our bizarre kind of sense of humor and sensibilities wasn't really represented in the ski industry. Sure, you know, like, absolutely. I'm sure you've seen that, too. Like, a lot of the stuff. Right? Yeah, I agree with that. a few folks about that. Everything is just, the edges are shaved off a lot. It's like, hey, we're outside, and we're a ski magazine, and it's like... Boring. You know, yeah, absolutely, just, totally. Calling it's, you out outside. Yeah, calling you out outside. Where are you? You're in here somewhere, I think. No, I don't read their stuff anymore That's anyway. Big That's, yeah. I don't know. That's what it is. No, you're not wrong. The the I don't want to use the word stuffy because the fans aren't stuffy at all. These are people, you know, but we, some of us have a sicker sense of humor and some of us aren't la- la- afraid to let it fly. I was just saying to Brian and Mario how I my filter comes off even more when I'm with these guys. And that's how I talk anyway. Yeah. But we have a lot of fun, and I think that's something else we bring is fun. Do you agree? 100%. And that's, I think, a perfect you know kind of example of what I'm talking about. Is sure. It almost seems like in their agenda is to, to push some sort of belief system instead of focusing on the fun. Yeah, absolutely. That's what it is. Just shut up about politics and ski. I agree with that, too. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're, they're taking the fun out of skiing. It's like they're trying to make everything so cookie-cutter and templated and sure. uh, controllable that it's removing a lot of what makes skiing so much fun. You know, a beautiful day on the mountain or skiing with your buddies does not have to be about some movement or setting some agenda. Absolutely. It could just be about hanging out with your friends and family skiing. Absolutely. I agree with that 100%. And you feel when you look around, tell me this dude straight ahead does not look like Putin, man. <laughs> See him? I think it is him. Putin at the, at the snow. Awesome. Dude, I'm getting his autograph. <laughs> Sorry to interrupt, but that just blew my mind. I'm going to have to go hashtag Putin. 
Actually, absolutely. Not that we support that or I the war in Ukraine. I can't believe that we went a whole six minutes without talking about Putin. I, dude. speaking tomorrow? I think he's speaking. He's on our stage tomorrow. <laughs> That's awesome. Let me tell you something. Um, since I'm talking to the Alex Joneses of the ski world or so I've heard. Yes, we are the info wars, apparently, of ski podcasting. <laughs> it is. And I'm not saying these guys aren't as entertaining, but they're definitely not as energetic or as lunatic-like as Alex Jones. Um, whether you love them or you hate them, you know, I'm going to – I'm nonpartisan, but – got tinfoil ski helmets. Absolutely. I can help with heat, though, man. I get cold it these days. It the radio waves, right? Yeah, it does. It does. It does. Um, don't chew on it if you got those fillings, though. Wasn't there something about that back? I don't fucking know. That's bef- that's to be on my. That's before my time. Um, yeah, that could be him. It could not be. But we don't support any of that because we're just making jokes, and that's what we're saying. It's a lot of fun. The fans out here are having a lot of fun. There's a ton of pretty girls out here, and we uh, you we know, just like comment on people. <laughs> we could, you know. Wow. We could do that, dude. We could just sit here and use like Instagram Live. Like we're just people watching at the snowbound. The big mics again. Where's Tim with the lights? Yeah, man. Like I think Tim went home. The other Tim, not, not me. Just Tim. Tim, not the, this uh, Tim. Tim, the sound guy. But Tim is. That's fine. And we just told him. See, there are so many things that we've tried to get into the weed thing here on Ski Rex Media. It never works. Every episode I've done about it just fails or bad it, it just turns into shit we try because it is a big thing there's a there's a weed culture in snow sports as as much as people don't and that's if whether you're a backcountry country hippie or you're an elitist out you know with your what, what was the usa gold pass yeah. 10 grand hey, you just hit 15 now park. inflation it is in the industry i i remember that was a that was a big thing when i was a teenager that was a that was a big awakening for me, just watching lifties getting high. I was like, okay. It's like you are operating heavy machinery here. Maybe you could perhaps kind of pay attention and know what you're doing here. Not it kill would us. be nice. So I wonder, now that it's legal in a lot of places, is it going to be uncool soon? I don't know. I don't know. Just I remember, though. Drinks and cocktails are coming strong. They are, That which is kind of weird. I don't know why not. Like, I quit drinking, but why not have the alcohol? Like, you, now you're just... It seems like a waste to me. I just bought some weird long trail, like CBD soda. Wow. It's like CBD seltzer or CBD. So there's no alcohol in it. It sure. just has CBD. No. Oh. And it, it, it tastes gross. Yeah, the, the, <laughs> the CBD and the just the weed, like, there's this additive that I put in drinks, and it just it, it doesn't taste pleasant. It's weird. <laughs> I, you know, shout out to Long Trail, man. If if any brewery is going to put CBD in something, it's going to be a Vermont one. <laughs> yeah, right. You know, you don't call it the Green Mountain State for nothing, believe me. One of my best friends has a grow operation in his backyard. He's actually really good at it. So if you guys enjoy it, I don't because I'm a wuss, but hey, that's fun. CBD? You ever tried I've that? never tried it. I kind of want to because I am, I'm not, really good. I, I'm getting, good for you. I'm in my 40s. You know, I'm going to the physical therapy before the season starts, and I'm down, done. Knees feel good, but by April, they're not going to feel good. CBD. CBD. I've heard it's CBD. pretty awesome. Uh, but get good quality CBD, though. None yeah. of this bullshit you, you see in these, you know, regular Walmart or whatever. Not the 7-Eleven CBD. No, no, no. I'm never doing that. Stay uh, from the spice. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm not doing that. I will go down to – I think we have a supplier in the town I live in, so I can figure it out. But if these guys suggest it, I'll check it out. There is no high. I just told them one of my horror stories about this. I don't, uh, it seems like just a missed opportunity to me. Uh, and, again, it's it, – point of view, you know. From <laughs> you my, weren't there, man. You weren't there. But you should have been because any time I tell it – it took me years to tell that story to people. It's embarrassing. But people are like, dude, that's funny. And I was like, all right. I recall a similar incident on a flight, right, Brian? Yes. Um, it was just, we were coming back from Whistler, mm. flying back from Seattle, and I'd taken a Seattle. brownie on okay. a red eye. Not a part of a brownie. He's trying to get um, me to eat a brownie. I'm like, no, nah, he's trying to sleep. He eats the whole thing. Because oh, I was God, hoping man. it would help me sleep on the red eye back from Seattle. Yeah. It did not help me sleep on the red eye back from Seattle. It made me think when we hit turbulence that we were going down, straight down, immediately. Yeah. That's a long flight, too. I've done that with one stop, and that's not a short flight to be freaking out, man. Solid seven hours. I seven think. hours, man. Uh, yeah, Seattle's up there in the corner, man. It's yeah. <laughs> and the best part was, so yeah, it was a red eye flight, and we're getting in at like 6 or 6.30 in the morning, and I had to work at 9. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah, that was a good... good uh, well, I did not want to take another vacation day. So Good man. Using them at Whistler. So. See, that's what ki- kids need to hear that. 
I'd they call out too easy these days. I'd rather just work high. Yeah, most people would. Right. Go to work. You gotta. You gotta get money so you can afford to go skiing again. <laughs> buy more weed. And buy more weed, <laughs> unless you know somebody, which I do. It's the circle of life. It's the circle of life. That's what, the, that's what the Lion King is about, right? That is what the Lion King is. Circle of life. It's about buying weed and skiing. That's yeah. Going to work. That's all it's about. He does look like Joe Camel a little. <laughs> he does look like that a little. So there you go, guys. This is the kind of fun we're having here. And I do apologize that this is going to come out after the fact. So I hope you got your fill of Mario and Brian. We have one fan with a mask sitting out there right now. You did have one fan with the mask. He's there. He's still there. Oh, yeah? He's keeping an eye oh, on yeah. Putin over there, I think. Yeah, I would be too, man. That's his Get down. Guard. Putin's bodyguard. Nope, there are a few masks here, but the pandemic's over, and that's not going to bother your skiing, man. Everybody's open this year. Don't worry about it. Let You know what the best thing to do? This is our advice as people who have could barely pass high school chemistry is a spit in your friend's mouth before the season starts to get up all your antibodies to build you up nice and strong so that you're ready to go and you get through the whole ski season without getting uh, covid or the flu or pneumonia or, or gonorrhea whatever and i'm with that because you know if you're spitting your friend's mouth you might learn something new about you and we're all inclusive here at ski x media that leads right well, your friend is definitely going to learn about you if you do that to them. Absolutely. In Ski Rex Media, I see awesome in the weird and sometimes the terrible. And spitting in your friend's mouths is definitely qualifies. You start getting air with trading fluids. I don't know. You get into a whole different realm there. It, uh, well, no, I won't, say, I won't say that one. I'll keep that one to myself. And Tim goes, why did I bother asking these assholes to talk? Because Man, they're more creative than I am, and I can fall asleep, and they'll just keep talking. That <laughs> happened when they were on my podcast. The power went out at my house. I got it. I, I was able to. I had the laptop, so I had the battery. I got the phone out, did the whole Wi-Fi thing, because the, the cell phone towers don't drop out. And they're still talking. And I was like, yes, yes. Just going along, waiting for you to come back. We can't be stopped. Once we get into, like, a groove or on a, you yeah. cannot stop us. Absolutely. It's like and an aircraft carrier. Like, you can't just turn it off and stop it at the brakes. Like, it's just going to go. No, you guys can't be stopped, and that's why you have your own stage for the entire weekend at the return of the Snowbound Expo, and I'm happy to say I got to share the stage with you, sort of, Yeah. you know, but it's good enough for me. I mean, to the crowd of two and a dog. Yes. And a dog. <laughs> Service animals are allowed. They're throwing interviews on the stage now. They're like, okay, you're over with this. We're going to have our own guests come up. You totally should do that, dude. Right? No. Do it. Why not? Stop us. We'll have, you know, no schedule, one. We can figure out how to work in our schedule. Oh, it's easy. It's easy. And just grab people like you. Come here. <laughs> and you. Come here. Don't look at me like that. Get over here. <laughs> awesome, guys. Well, I hope you guys have a good weekend. I'm only down here today, which just sucks. But I'm going to make up the time. Absolutely. I'm happy to meet you guys. Hope we get to ski at some point. Yeah. Uh, I know a little harder for Mario because you live down in the south, which I love the south. He also, too, is baby. up in New Hampshire. At least once a month in the winter. Yeah. Oh, that's true. Maybe even more. We'll see. Yeah, you've said that in the past. I have no memory. I got to ski New Hampshire. That's my. That's my. One of my goals this year. Cool. Definitely I'm there, man. Whaleback Mountain. <laughs> Partners of Ski X Media. Shout yeah. out. Right. Shameless plugs and shout outs. Are they here? <laughs> I've heard somebody from there is wandering around. They don't have an official representative, oh. but I, I, I'm not sure who it is because I haven't run into anybody I know from there yet. Portable booth. You just walk around. Yeah. Porto Potty, Porto Butho. Well, they, they did something with Egan. Their their uh, executive director knows Dan Egan. Okay. From back in the long ago, I guess. And they did something with the Warren Miller film that just came out or whatever it was. I don't know the details. I'm not that in with the organization. They showed the film, I think it was Thursday night or no, Wednesday night. Okay. Somewhere, uh, they were at the Berkeley okay. uh, Center of Music. Oh, there College, you go. Music College, whatever it is. Yeah, and, and, and Whaleback had something to do with that, too. I have no idea what it is or what it was. But I love those guys, too, and I love these guys. Man, I'll let you guys go. I know you said you wanted to go find beer, so I'll let you go do that yeah. since I don't do that. And uh, I hope you have a good weekend, guys, or I hope you had a good weekend when this comes out. I, I want to go curling, and I want to go on that little fake ski slope they got. I, I like that idea, too. I might have to, good. Thanks, That guys. you might see me doing that, too. Thanks, guys. I appreciate it. Come by. Thanks. Excellent. And that's it, baby. You guys are the best.